Okay, so what to do with the results then? So obviously, you know, what do biologists do with the results? Hmm, we draw graphs. Um, so you now need to figure out which is your dependent and which is your independent. So if you think about what you alter in your experiment, that is the independent variable. So what we had that was different for each tube in the setup was that they were all different distances from the lamp. So your independent variable... Ah, oh, I shouldn't have looked at that lamp, I've got spots now. <laughs> is, uh, that's probably why it's got the cardboard box over it. And, you know, again, you need a unit. And the colour change, the thing that we're measuring, is the thing that goes at the side, because that depends on how far away it depends get it? Depends on how far away from the lamp it is. What colour it changed depended on how far away. So how did we measure the colour change? We measured it by doing... Oh, can't, mm -hmm. squeeze, can't squeeze it in. <laughs> Absorbance. So our writing is much bigger upside down. And that's in uh, what we call arbitrary units. So it's a scale that runs from, on well, our colour emitters anyway, 0 to 2, one in the middle. And then, of course, our distances from the lamps, we'd have to sort of, you know, do... I can't, I've just looked at the lamp again. 5, 10... Obviously, this isn't graph paper, this isn't, you know, yours would be a lot more accurate than this in your practical books. So, close to the lamp, the solutions were purple and this gives us really quite high absorbances. I think we had about one and a half in one of my groups so I'm going to put that the distance was five and the absorbance was one and a half. When you get to the yellow colours they're right down in the you know point zeros so I'm just, just make up two numbers say right that's it. Now obviously for reliability purposes You would be doing this three times, and therefore this would be a mean absorbance that you were plotting. But your graph's going to go down. So at this side, this is where your solution is purple, and this is where your solution is yellow. And that shows... Oh, look at that! Oh, we could put them on the line. <laughs> da da da! <laughs> Always thinking, Dr. Savile. And, and that's great because that tells us that this is producing more carbon dioxide and this is, uh, sorry, this is producing more carbon dioxide. This is using more carbon dioxide, so it sort of gives us an almost relative rate of photosynthesis. But remember what I said with the... Uh, Mm, I'm going to have to move the pots, I'm sorry that's so, it was a good idea. But really what we would not like to know is where those two things are balanced. And so what we also need to do is to plot on what the actual indicator is. Uh, so I did this for both of my groups and it kind of worked out around about there, about 0.65. So that's the indicator without any algae balls in, without doing anything to it. I just pop the indicator into the uh, into the colorimeter. So there are obviously there are other ways of doing it. So instead of zeroing with water and getting a scale from zero to two, you could zero it with indicator and you get plus numbers and minus numbers. That's the another way of doing it. And so where those two lines cross is where there is no change in the indicator. And you need to think, well, why is there no change in the indicator there? Well, respiration and photosynthesis are respectively producing and using as much carbon dioxide. So we call this point, and I think that your instructions tell you to work out where this is, we call this the compensation point. Um, and it's just where the two processes are equal. And of course you're doing A-level, so if you're talking about 
carbon dioxide production and carbon dioxide usage, you should really be able to tell us which reactions they're used in. So you should be talking about Calvin cycle <coughs> and possibly Rubisco and you should be talking about Link and uh, Krebs if you're talking about compensation points. So just very quickly, um, just run through a couple of other things that you could use this for. So um, I know certainly some of Miss Carter's groups I think did this. The other independent variables besides distance from the lamp, you could wrap different coloured filter papers. Uh, so filter film, I think you would call it rather than a paper, round your uh, reaction vessel and that would enable you to construct an absorption and action spectrum really um, because obviously you'd get different colours depending on which wavelength of light you'd use and you could plot then wavelength of light against colour of indicator. At the red and blue ends then you'd get more um, photosynthesis and it would go that colour and of course with the green light which it's reflecting it would go the yellow colour so you get a, a purple yellow purple kind of thing going on. So you could do that. You should be able to explain why you can't investigate pH um, and that's pretty much because it's a pH indicator so you know if you're investigating acid pHs it's pretty much always going to be that colour. If you're doing alkali pHs it'll pretty much be that colour from the start. Same thing with hydrogen carbonate concentrations, so that's the thing that we use to provide carbon dioxide. It's a hydrogen carbonate indicator, so if you put in a high concentration of hydrogen carbonate, it'll be that colour, and a low concentration, it'll be that colour. You can't measure the change. Um, what else could you investigate? I've done a uh, wavelength. Oh, temperature. Temperature would be tricky because you'd have to have these in a water bath. Shining a light on them would be quite difficult, I think. But theoretically, you could do temperature. Uh, so as long as you steer clear of carbon dioxide, I think you'll be okay.